Hey everybody, Coach Mel here. Welcome to the MelFit Podcast, where we talk all things health, fitness, and lifestyle. Josh and I have been doing so good, and we have stuck to our promise to produce a podcast every week and get it on uh, our MelFit app on page two, swipe left, or anywhere you would consume a podcast by Friday. So uh, Spotify or um, Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts, I guess. We're obviously Apple users, so sometimes when it comes to Google stuff, I'm not quite quite savvy. So welcome, welcome. If you are not a member of MelFit, um, hopefully you can get some good, good little nuggets out of this and kind of uh, see uh, what MelFit is all about, what um, I'm all about, um, who I am and what I believe in and what I stand for. Um, and would love to have you on the Melfit team if you're not already. So uh, I did a Facebook Live. I do a weekly Facebook Live, and I do allow people who aren't members of, um, who aren't on my app or clients that I'm not working with on a meal plan to join um, because I feel like personal training, hiring a nutritionist, um, hiring a health and fitness coach in general is a very personal thing. I mean, it's almost like going to the doctor. Like, you're going to have to tell me your weight. I'm going to practically see you naked. Um, It's pretty uncomfortable. I'm going to, you know, hear about the meds that you're on. Um, I'm going to basically learn your darkest, deepest secrets, which in order to really connect with me, you really need to have no secrets. So it's a very personal thing, or you could maybe compare it to, Um, seeking out a counselor they're gonna learn about some of your deepest darkest darkest stories or moments of your life and you want to make sure that you're trusting your health and fitness coach Um, the person that you're trusting is the right fit for you Um, so today's episode is going to be titled The best, um, what do I have here? One, two, three, four. I have the best five things to pack on a long hike. And of course, I will give other suggestions as well. It is May 6th, 4th, 2022. And we have had the coldest month of April on record or like on record like ever no wonder I was freaking out when it snowed a couple weeks ago I may or may not have said the f word while my husband was on a business call um so yeah so we're just starting to normally I would have all my yard work done by now and all my flowers planted but it's kind of a late start to the year but Um, It's going to be a good time to get out and start hiking and doing all of the summer activities. So sports nutrition is something that I really enjoy. And I started getting into sports nutrition um, first first and foremost um, for my own benefit. And then I, um, I ended up becoming a marathon coach, half marathon, marathon coach. So I really got into it um, to help benefit my clients. And if you're into hiking, I think it's pretty important that you prepare yourself, uh, especially for a long hike, because it can make or break you. Um, It could really make your hike super enjoyable, or it could make it pretty um, unenjoyable because you've hit a wall. Uh, If you're listening to this and you're a runner, you know what that's like. I mean, you could have the best run of your life based on what you had for breakfast, okay? So uh, the most important thing is to, everybody's a little different, so test different combinations of foods and see what your body does well with. I know for a fact that I can practically run a half marathon, um, 13.1 miles, on a really well-rounded, a couple things, either um, my Melfit Overnight Oats um, or my Melfit Sweet Potato Breakfast Bowl. 
Now, I will tell you, with the oats, I don't run well with bananas. Although I love bananas and they're really healthy, when they're raw, cut up, and put in my oatmeal, um, I don't do well with them. So I usually stick to berries. Of course, I put the almond milk in there, cinnamon, coconut, and maybe a little bit of nut butter for healthy fat, scoop of protein powder for extra protein. So I know that sets well, well with me. The other breakfast that we tested on a pro athlete that just did the Boston Marathon is the Melfit Sweet Potato Breakfast Bowl. And it is just like... Sweet potatoes have been said, uh, you know, people say they're like the perfect food. Well, they're, they're a slow-burning complex carbohydrate that are low on the GI scale. And you really want to seek these foods out um, so that you don't have to constantly be eating. I mean, it's not real convenient if you're running 26.2 miles and you have to constantly stop and eat. And what's convenient to either pack with you on long runs or um, get on the side of the road at a long run, okay? Um, I would refrain from the junk food that they give at the races. I would refrain from the donuts or the Snickers. You can have a, um, like a, uh, I call them like a fast carb, Um simple carb like fruit or dried fruit or honey that can bring your blood sugar up really fast in you know instead of a donut or a snickers bar okay so if you're trying to live a healthy lifestyle i would try to also keep your foods that you're using for long runs or long hikes whole food source as well but the tricky part is what's convenient to pack on you and how do you stay away from like the gels and the blocks and all that so I'll give you guys some some good ideas here this one's mainly going to be focused for hikes but if you're listening to this and you're a runner this this could there there are some things on here that you could sneak in your little fanny pack as well so Uh, We're going to talk about glycogen and how long it takes your body to go through your glycogen stores. So I'm going to give you the description of glycogen, assuming that not everybody knows what that is. Glycogen is a substance deposited in the body as a carb source. It's basically your backup fuel, okay? So after about 90 minutes, um, your glucose levels get low. And whether you're hiking or you're running, a big no-no is to wait till wait too long and then you bonk or you hit a wall. Then if you have food with you, you're just kind of like shoving things in your mouth, hoping that it will raise your blood sugar. And that can cause gastrointestinal GI issues, which are not fun when you're in a race not fun when you're out on the trail when there's no bathroom and you're with a group so you want to learn how to eat the proper food combinations that are going to keep you satiated long term and also know when to fuel and how often to fuel okay so as far as hiking and long runs go the most important thing are going to be that you're going to really lean on are your carbs and your fats on a long hike or on a long run day you can get away with a lot more healthy carbohydrates and healthy fats than on other days if you're really going high carb high fat on days that you're sitting in an office and barely getting 5,000 steps, it's probably not gonna help your weight loss or your maintenance goals. So the days that you do have like a killer, you know, like nine mile hike or whatever planned, um, really enjoy consuming some of these foods and know that you're they are gonna fuel your body, you are gonna burn them off, but it's something that's a treat and it's not something that you can just mow down on all the time, okay? So 
one thing that you have to know is protein is the most satiating macro. And that's why I always say, if you didn't know anything about nutrition, if you could just focus all of your meals and snacks around your protein first and build around it, then you're going to have a well-balanced meal that keeps you full for a long time. And you're shooting for something that's going to keep you full for three to four hours, okay? Um, The reason that it's the most satiating macro is because it requires more energy to digest protein than fats and carbs, okay? Um, So you'll kind of get to know... um, how many carbohydrates you're going to need based on how much you weigh and how far you're going to go. And my best advice is don't overthink it. Don't like think you need to have the scientific calculation. There is a calculation for how many carbs you'll need. But most importantly, um, be smart. Listen to your body. Don't get up and go on a nine mile hike with no breakfast, like that's not smart. Also, be aware that like, we have a race locally, if you're watching this from somewhere else or listening from somewhere else, called Bloomsday, and it's, I think it's almost eight miles, and there's this big thing where the restaurants just totally, you know, thrive over there because everybody goes out the night before and carb loads, okay? And, and there is truth to that. I really do think that um, what you ate the night before is definitely going to help you with your endurance on a hike or a run. But you don't, ha- again, you don't have to be unhealthy. You don't have to go and do pasta, which in turn has dairy, which in turn is gonna cause gastrointestinal problems, which i.e. you're gonna be in the porta potty or looking for a spot off the side of the trail. So um, carb loading in an unhealthy way, it's really not necessary. Um, Again, a good choice the night before would be, and this is such an easy meal for anybody to prepare, is wash some sweet potatoes either white or orange there's a controversy about yams and sweet potatoes so i'll just call them white and orange Um, the orange ones i think would be better for running or hiking because they have more naturally occurring sugar in them and that will help your um, glucose levels so your blood sugar Um, so i would just wash them Um, I like to cut the ends off of them, poke them with a knife, put them in the oven on 400 degrees, um, and I just use a baking sheet with parchment paper or a silicone liner and bake them until they're soft. I mean, they're going to take a bit. Maybe you bake them for 20 and flip them over in another 20 so you'll know when they're soft. And then just basically top them with an easy protein. Um, I have a recipe called Melfit Sweet Potato Sloppy Joes. That's always easy. You could do a quick, um, I have a Melfit barbecued chicken, um, stuffed sweet potato. You could do a simple healthy taco meat. You could throw some chicken in your Instapot or Crock-Pot and throw in a bottle of Herdez, a salsa verde. So I think that would be a good um, a good meal to have the night before a, a good activity. So then in the morning, I already mentioned some things that you can have for breakfast. But the best thing you can have for breakfast are things that your body digests well and breaks down and don't cause side stitches or any gastrointestinal problems. And when you found that, stick with that. Don't ever switch it up. If you're listening or watching this and you're one of my um, half marathon or marathon clients, don't ever switch your breakfast up on race day or you will be sorry, okay? So what are the best um, things to pack for a long hike? The best things you can pack are things that aren't going to require a cooler. Um, As far as ice goes, I I showed on my Facebook Live, I mean, you can get some little tiny ice packs from the section at Walmart, like the kitchen section, and you can get a quart size, you know, 
about like this Ziploc baggie and everything I'm gonna talk about will fit in there. So you can throw the ice pack on the bottom and then you can throw everything else on the top and that should fit in um, a larger fanny pack or a backpack, but you don't want so much stuff on your back that it is hindering your ability to hike at a good pace. I hate when I'm in a group and I don't wanna be the one to fall behind so if I'm going on just a shorter hike, I'll bring my Melfit water bottle because it's got a handle. But when we do something like Scotchman's Peak, I definitely want to break out my Camelback. And mine aren't even Camelback brands. We just bought ours from Walmart. Um, you don't need to spend a lot of money. Pre-COVID, I hate to quote prices now, but pre-COVID they were $19.99 a piece. Um, and I think we have our packs hold like a liter and a half of water or something something to that effect. But it's definitely enough water to get to the top and the bottom. And what I like about it is the little spout is right here. So if you've got people hiking behind you, you can just quickly get water. And if you feel like you don't want to stop and get your water bottle out of your backpack or stop and drink water, you can actually end up becoming hydrated and your muscles can cramp up. That happened to a friend of ours. And I mean, it was during the cramp, I think he burst some some blood vessels or something in his leg. I mean, it was really bad. So you wanna take care of yourself first and foremost on the hike. And after that, um, help others by possibly maybe putting a couple of extra things in your pack for the people that aren't prepared. Anybody that's ever hiked, uh, oh, I wanted to say with the camelbacks, they are a little bit uh, of a pain in the butt to rinse out, but I just rinse mine out and set it on my paper towel hold. I take my paper towel off and I put it on my paper towel holder and I kind of just move it around. And yeah, it probably takes a good three, four days to dry out, but it's better than having to haul something you know bulky and heavy or running out of water because you only bought like brought like a 16 ounce plastic one but um, everybody knows me I've got this little basket and I have baggies and I just kind of let people grab out of the basket what they need and most importantly what I like to see everybody pack even if they just get a little snack size baggie I want everybody to grab like a few ibuprofen, which we're not pill poppers. I only take ibuprofen in extreme situations, but if you were in a situation like my friend on that hike, like he needed that ibuprofen. He was, his inflammation was just coming on fast and hard. So I always tell people, grab some ibuprofen, grab a couple band-aids, grab a couple of, um, alcohol pads to wipe off if you skin your knee, um, some gauze pads. Um, I usually have some um, tape to tape those. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Usually, definitely a small thing of mosquito repellent is usually a sought after thing. A small thing of sunscreen is a good thing to take on a hike definitely wear a hat because you could get a tick if you live in North Idaho and you're covering your your face um, and if you're hiking in a tank top you might want to reapply if you have a backpack on or something you might want to reapply your sunscreen but I'd have to say the bug spray, spray is huge there's nothing worse than having your body being swollen from the heat and then getting bit by a bunch of uh, mosquitoes which cause your body to inflame and then you you of course the reason is because you didn't have um, any bug spray and also some if you can find an all-natural afterbite because sometimes even when you spray you get by you get bit um, we of course carry a weapon um, I think that's always good. You never know what what animal you're going to see in the, you know, in the woods. If you've got experience with a firearm and um, if you've got a, 
permit or open carry or whatever, I think it's important for someone in the group to have a firearm because in North Idaho, there are cougars and bears and mountain lions. What else is out there, Josh? Foxes. Huh? Foxes. Foxes, Sasquatch. <laughs> but uh, yeah, pretty important that someone in the group has that. Um, also, having proper footwear is huge. I always turn everybody on to my Hoka speed goats i think they make a speed goat four and a speed goat five i've had different brands i've had solomon i've had adidas these are a chunk of change but if hiking is is going to be your active rest day i would highly recommend that you invest in these and i can always tell um rookie hikers when you hear well, they show up in Nike tennis shoes with a really flat sole with no traction and they're constantly slipping. And I mean, a bad fall can ruin your day. Like why not just spend the money and just keep them? They'll last you a while, just use them for hiking. Um, and they really, really do have some great grip on them. So definitely would recommend Hoka's. If you're local, there's a Fleet Feet in Coeur d'Alene and Spokane at Kendall Yards and they both offer well let me say Spokane does because I've been there offers a foot scan and they'll kind of tell you whether you um what is it pronate and supin supinate Josh should know because he's had his foot feet looked at lately and they'll help you um pick the proper either running shoe or hiking shoe and possibly might end up um, recommending some custom insoles and they can educate you about how many miles till you need to get a new pair and I think the the hardest thing about shoes you guys that I've had is the outside will still look good but the inside will be broken down and in the past my um, clients my marathon half marathon clients that I've coached if anybody complains of knee issues it's one of two things it's either they need new shoes or it's their IT band um, so um, the, the the new shoes is the one that I hope for and that's a really easy fix but yeah you have to be okay with the fact that those shoes aren't doing you any favor if you've broken them down um, you've put miles on them and then the insoles are starting to wear down and they're not going to offer you support so then it's time to move on so um, definitely those um, and I said on my Facebook live so I hope if some of you are listening to this again you are getting new information because my Facebook live I I switched to 30 minutes um, for summer and I might keep it that way if you guys like it so you're getting less information so hopefully you guys popped over here to listen um, secondly if you invest in some good socks you will not get blisters okay um, I was hiking with a friend that was wearing hiking boots which I will argue with people that you don't necessarily need hiking boots you don't ne necessarily really need to have that um, ankle support. I think it causes a lot of blisters. Um, you need a good pair of hiking shoes and a good pair of socks. So we were hiking Scotchman's Peak and he got blisters within like the blink of an eye and he was miserable with every step. Well, luckily, I had the band-aids so I asked him to just stop for a minute let's put some band-aids on there I mean you are gonna be not you're gonna go home tonight and think gosh that was the worst hike ever okay because you weren't prepared I did later buy him some hocus for his birthday but the socks are also important you don't want a low sock that's gonna slip into your shoe and then your your bare ankle is just rubbing on your shoe so you want my top pick is going to be Balega, and they're probably about $13 a pair. You can also get them at Fleet Feet or on Amazon, um, and they have a little lip at the top. Um, it kind of looks like this, 
And at first I was like, oh, that lip is ugly. They stick out of my shoe. Well, when you come home with no blisters, it's worth the ugly. So those are great. And then the other one is Bom- bombas or bombas I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it and for every pair of socks you buy they give a pair away to somebody in need and those can be found on Amazon I think Athleta has both of those as well in the Spokane um, River Park um, Square area but uh, a little bit of a splurge but I will tell you I have a sock basket and every day the only socks I want to get out of there are my Balegas or my Bombas because everything else just doesn't cut it. So very important. And I'm kind of working up the body. Um, I found a killer pair of pants on Amazon for my husband. And you can just type in hiking pants with zip off that zip off into shorts and those are so great because you can put and they're pretty thin and comfortable and you can be hiking in those maybe you start out and you're not as warm it's a little chilly and then when you warm up you can just zip off zip them off to pants so those are always really cool um i like to personally wear shorts that already have an under a built-in underwear liner because it is not comfortable um generally to wear underwear and shorts when you're hiking I like to just have that already built in and most people are pretty comfortable with that when those first came out I thought they were so weird I would always wear additional underwear with them but now I'm like okay I get it way more comfortable less friction close to your body um because you don't want to get chafing Another good thing for you to bring would be a small thing of Vaseline or if you have the, I have a mini deodorant for chafing for people and it just, it doesn't mean you're overweight if you use that. I use it and I'm not overweight. I have a lot of people use it, but if you want to put a little bit in between your thighs and maybe around your sports bra area and right here, you won't get any chafing. Um, And then moving up. Uh, a comfortable uh, for women's sports bra and just a real comfortable breathable tank or t-shirt for men and women and then you might want to grab just a real lightweight um, uh, jacket or just a lightweight kind of pullover Um, I like the zippies so they're easy to get over your head so and then of course we said your hat so that's kind of my kind of go-to that I'm really comfortable in okay and then at the end I'll talk about what I suggest to have for the after party okay so the foods obviously we talked about water that's not a food so that's a given um you get your little quart size baggie you throw your ice pack in there And the number one thing I would say would be that would be really easy to pack for a hike would be apple slices. Everybody loves apples. Um, And then you can grab little quart bags and put them in your big Ziploc baggie so you can just grab everything out. But if you filled up one of those, that's plenty of food for you for before and after. So apple slices and I would take a a second to squeeze some fresh lemon juice on there toss it around so they don't brown or any fruit what's a good fruit that travels well apples oranges bananas pears are probably a little soft grapes could travel okay um so that would be that would be great and that's a good you know a little bit of uh natural uh fructose sugar to get into your bloodstream Okay, my number two would be um, turkey, chicken, or jerky. Jerky is the easiest to pack. Um, Even if you make it yourself, meat is expensive. So um, jerky, chicken, what I think is super easy is jam into any grocery store, grab a rotisserie chicken, take the skin off it, shred it, throw it in a baggie. Um, If you don't have time, just you know grab the rotisserie chicken pull all the bigger parts off and you know 
put it in a baggie. Um, you can buy already shredded rotisserie chicken. That's always a good easy snack. And then um, turkey. So my top pick used to be Plainsville. Since I created my meal plans, now I, I've changed my thoughts on the turkey. I really like the Kirkland oven roasted turkey. That's always great. And then my last choice would be any deli Jenny O turkey sun-dried tomato cracked black pepper so that's always a great little um, go-to um, to snack on um, good source of protein usually pretty easy on most people's gut it's not going to cause any discomfort um, my number three would be bars and for melfit lara bars rx bars and then i found another one um, the other day called the good to go bars uh, if you're local, I found it at Yolks and Post Falls. I actually found it one time when I was traveling to Lake Las Vegas, and it tastes like soft. It tastes like almost like soft bread or almost like a soft cookie. It's just so good. Um, what you shouldn't pack on a hike is any bar that has chocolate chips in it that's going to melt. So you want something that's more um, kind of, firm so there are there are rx bars without chocolate they do travel well in the heat and there are a lot of lara bars without chocolate the um cherry pie lemon lemon key lime pie all those have no chips that are going to melt so those are going to travel well so that's always kind of an easy go-to um number four which i think is the funnest one and i think it's fun to get away with um some healthy carbohydrates but obviously a little bit more carbs than you would eat on a normal day i love a good trail mix the problem with store-bought trail mix is that we don't eat peanuts which are a legume so there's always peanuts in there there's always m m's there's always chocolate chips with dairy in them so we're gluten-free dairy-free no processed sugar on melfit if you don't know that and so I think the best thing to do is to make your own trail mix. I buy various nuts from Costco, pecans, almonds, macadamia nuts, walnuts, um, hazelnuts, and then I buy my dried fruit. And what you're looking for with dried fruit, and it is kind of a challenge, you wanna buy dried fruit with no added sugar. And if you don't wanna stand in the aisle for a long time, uh, don't bother looking at Walmart because I don't think I've ever found anything there. Um, I would definitely go to Costco and I actually found um, in the bins at Winco yesterday, I found dried apricot, dried apples, and a mixture of golden raisins and cranberries. And cranberries are the toughest ones to find without sugar. If your local Pilgrims has over by their salad bar, they have cranberries sweetened with apple juice and they are phenomenal. I just love them. I have ordered unsweetened cranberries off of Amazon before and they are not a treat. They're bleh. They just really don't have the best flavors. So yeah, so get a big bowl, throw in two or three varieties of nuts, throw in two or three varieties of dried fruits. Dates are great. Dates are a good, fast sugar. I used to keep dates on my counter at my brick and mortar. If someone was getting low blood sugar, one or two dates can bring them back to life. Mix it all up and then um, put it in, you know, little snack baggies for everyone. So um, you're going to save money making it yourself and you're going to know it's Malfit approved. Chocolate chips, unless you have a cooler that someone's bringing which i really doubt someone's going to bring a cooler and even an ice pack is probably not going to prevent it from melting i would probably stay away from the chocolate chips okay if you have a cooler in your car and you're going to have a little after party like we always do maybe you can you know get a really killer um dark chocolate high percentage of dark chocolate bar um I recommend Primal Kitchens or Lilies for you guys to share at the end, okay? So my number five best thing to pack for a long hike would be the individual nut butter packs. You can find those at Walmart if you're local. 
Pilgrims or your Whole Foods stores. Um, most grocery stores are now selling the individual um, packages of cashew butter, sunflower butter, almond butter, um, macadamia nut butter, and it's just otherwise how are you going to pack it you mean you don't you want your you know ziploc baggie of snacks to be nice and flat and be able to toss in your backpack or just toss in your little fanny pack um and if you're looking for a fanny pack i found a really nice a couple oversized fanny packs for my husband and i that i could definitely if i had my camel back i could fit my gallon sized snack pack in there okay um so I found them at Ross. So pop around to your local Ross or TJ Maxx for those. And so for number five, it was nut butter packs and veggies. Okay, so celery and nut butter, carrots and nut butter. And if you've got kids in the group, they're going to love this. If you have apple slices as well, you can use the nut butter for the apple slices. So these are all just really, really easy um, easy foods that you can pack. Um, maybe you bring one of these, maybe you bring all of these, whatever. I like to, because we like to drive quite a ways to hike, if I bring this kind of thing, I mean, I've got food for the hike, and then I've got food for after if I need it. So you don't want to run out of food when you're in the middle of nowhere, okay? So one thing to note about hiking it is hiking it is a full body workout you're working your quads your hamstrings you're working your um core you're working your low back i mean everything if you're hauling a backpack you're working your upper body it's such a good workout and it's so enjoyable especially if you can find a hike um where you know, the views are good. If you are not familiar, I use an app called All Trails. It's a free app, and wherever I'm at, I always Google um, hiking trails. My stepdaughter was here a while back and said, oh, there's no hiking trails where I live. I said, have you ever looked at All Trails? And All Trails is a way to discover hikes that you never even knew about. So you can put whether you want easy, moderate, hard, you can put that you want it to be dog friendly, kid friendly. You can put that you want, you know, to find water, rivers, lakes, streams, waterfalls, that kind of thing. So um, people have gone on there and written reviews. People go on there and give better directions if the if Google doesn't take you there. And I think Scotchman's Peak, um, if you look at the notes for all trails, if you went by Google Maps to get there, you would be you would get lost. It kind of kind of takes you the wrong way. So um, I would highly recommend that you make some plans this summer. Um, what I think is fun is if you can get together with another person where you guys kind of banter back and forth. Hey, I'll plan the hike this week. You plan the hike next week. And I would try, I personally love to see water. So try to find some hikes that bring you to a waterfall or to a body of water. If you've got dogs, it's nice to um, have a place for them to get a drink. Um, or if you are taking animals with you, take care of your animals too. Bring your poopy cleanup bags. Bring a, you can bring a, uh collapsible with a little what's that thing called like a clip carabiner god i can't believe i came up with the word maybe my long covid's gone um like with a carabiner and clip it to your backpack or your fanny pack and make sure you have enough water for your dog what i always tell myself is if i'm hungry my dog's hungry if i'm thirsty my dog's thirsty so make sure you have enough for the pooches um okay you guys oh another thing if you're not doing if you do have access to keep things cool i have a recipe on my app called melfit move bars phenomenal if anybody hasn't already tried it super super good um i kind of wanted to add a couple of things um i wanted to add the quote that i that I use for my Facebook Live at the end, but I wanted to talk about the after party. So when we hike in a group, it's not about 
who's better than the other person or who's going to get done first. It's about the fact that we're all out there just to have, you know, get some exercise and, you know, just, you know, community and camaraderie. And what we usually do is we always, I always bring chairs because of course your legs are going to be toast. And if I get there first, I set up chairs. I always bring a cooler with ice. I'll bring extra water just in case um, I run out of water, anybody else needs water. And I'll bring, um, we'll usually have a a non-alcoholic and alcoholic beverages. I'll bring some, you know, sparkling waters. I'll bring some bubbly or bubbly as a sparkling water. I'll bring some kombucha and then maybe we'll do like a, 100 calorie um, Topo Chico seltzer or Truly or something like that. So um, very, very important. And I always, always look forward to this when I get to the end. Bring some baby wipes because your legs are going to be dirty. Your feet are going to be dirty, especially if you wore shorts. And that way you can kind of wipe, wipe yourself down. Some people like to go. Sometimes we'll go. Um, to a restaurant there's this pizza place that we go to overlooking Pondere Lake that's really cool and although we all look like scrubs we want to at least clean our legs up so also bring a pair of flip-flops because your feet are so swollen from the hike it's so nice and it's usually hot when we hike take those socks off take the shoes off and clean your feet up and put your flip-flops on also prevents a lot of feet fungus a lot of times when people get things like that it's because there's too much moisture in their socks and shoes and it's really a-okay to wash your tennis shoes and your hiking shoes I've been doing it for years I just make sure I throw them in with a load of towels I open up the shoelaces so they they get clean and I just let them air dry so keep everything clean Also, sometimes if you're, you know, really sweaty, it's nice to, you know, if you can go find somewhere to, you know, wipe yourself off a little bit, maybe bring your deodorant, maybe some lotion, and then have a fresh um, set of comfortable, you know, after clothes. That's always nice. Um, And then, yeah, so it's just kind of cool to just chill out and wait for people to come down and the next thing you know everybody's sitting around and talking about their experiencing enjoying a alcoholic or non-alcoholic beverage and it's just kind of like seals the deal so that's really fun so um, I'm going to leave you guys with a quote and uh, hope you guys enjoyed my best five things to pack on a long hike podcast um I have a feeling I'll be referring this to uh, a lot of clients. People ask me questions all the time, and it's like, oh, with these podcasts, I love to just say, go listen to episode number da-da-da. All the information's there, so saves me a little bit of time, too. So this is how I'm putting systems in place for the most commonly asked questions that I get at MailFit, so I don't have to constantly type or speak voice message some big huge thing but also I just don't want people to miss information I think that you know uh you know education and information is the cure to anything I mean knowledge is power so I hate to not give people the knowledge that you know it's there I just need to direct them in the right spot to find it so my quote is food is the most abuse and abused anxiety drug exercise is the most underutilized antidepressant and that is so true if you took all the tips I gave you on all the things that you need to have a safe um, satiated happy healthy hike Um, that should be your drug, the endorphins of that hike and the fact that you were prepared, everything went well, um, you know, maybe someone skinned a knee, but you had everything to clean it up, that type of thing. So that's what is most important to me. So thank you to everybody listening or watching, whether you're listening to the podcast or you're watching this on YouTube. Um, I would love, love, love for you guys to 
Uh, like, subscribe, and share the show. If you have time, leave us a review. We'd really appreciate it. And uh, send us a message. Leave some comments. Let us know um, what topics you would like us to talk about because we are recording once a week. So I um, love to hear topic ideas. And thanks for joining. Thanks, everybody, for listening in. Hopefully you did this while you were walking or hiking or running. And we will see you guys on the next Melfit podcast. Have a great week. Mm-hmm.